Hello friends and welcome to my first gecko. This ship features the salvaging process of a gecko on the easiest difficulty. It's a tutorial which will show you how to do the new work orders, how to dislodge the ship safely and how to um, get on to, to the parts you want to have and how to, well, get a system into dissolving this thing because the gecko is a lot larger than the mackerel and uh, this makes the game a lot different. So if you like this type of content, drop this channel a subscription and you won't miss a thing in the future. So first off, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the mecha rail. We have to depressurize the thing because a pressurized ship is deadly. So the airlocks are on the top side of the ship and the inside is most of the time unpressurized, but that doesn't mean a thing. That just means we have to open all the doors and uh, here you see an airstream <laughs> that's uh, going out as we open the door. And it's really important to do that everywhere or you're going to um, suffer really bad chain reactions if small mistakes happen. So you can grab a hold to the wall while holding the X button if uh, there's pressurized air getting a hold of you. And now we're heading towards the cockpit. Um, I really like to start with the cockpit because uh, we're not going to uh, to um, dismantle the ship here. So there, the cockpit had had still pressure, and now it's safe. All right. It's really really important because um, chain reactions are a nasty thing which will blow up the whole ship. So there's a uh, there's always pretty useful loot in these side chambers. There's uh, O2. Just check that out. So I opened all the airlocks and let's get to the back side of the ship. New work orders are class 2 reactor is new, power generator is new, ECU is new. In front of us is the ECU which is a pretty big computer terminal and uh, we have to take care of that. So... In front of us is a radiation source and that's uh, what the crackling noise is uh, telling us. So here's the uh, generator. We don't want to uh, get that thing off because it's a class 2 generator and those are much bigger than the other uh, ones. So here's the uh, panel to flush out the coolant and not, not only the fuel out of the pipe, sorry. But I don't have a utility key and we're going to manage without. So this is the last door and we're going to sit in the outer hull of the ship now. Um, as you see here it's, it's quite big and in this direction is the thruster room so the crackling noises stop because we're uh, getting away from the radiation source okay or i guess that is uh what it means or it's just some weird sound bug i don't know but i guess it was the radiation um here inside the outer hull we see the true dimensions of the ship it's pretty big and if we want to achieve anything, we need to get the generator out of the box. But first we need to get the box out of the bigger box. So I always like to start with the nacelles as do many uh, other players as well. So the nacelles are sitting here. And on the medium difficulty, you just have to uh, get them away from uh, the uh, cut points inside and then just tether them to the barge and that's that. There's only one nasal per side so we don't need to uh, do anything uh, except for cutting them loose. One and two. Careful with the uh, furnaces, they're really uh, hungry for loot. Okay, so now that's uh, out of business, what do we do now? Um, there are p 
pipes connecting the thrusters to the main frame, and of course the main frame is connected by uh, structural uh, units connected to nanocarbon uh, panels. We know the drill. So to get things done, I really like to remove the middle segment first, so we're going to get there. Um, the middle segment is what covers the generator unit, and once this, uh, once we're getting uh, rid of this uh, part of the ship, we're able to get uh, on the generator unit quite easily. So I'm using the split saw here to uh, get rid of the cut points. These are, of course, not the only ones. There we go. First off, I'll just uh, follow with what I see. So there are uh, pipes above me, so I'm uh, trying to uh, get them out of my line of sight because uh, the split saw would uh, make short work out of those pipes if it would touch them, so really, really be careful with that if you want to use the split saw. In doubt, always use the stinger because uh, that's your precision tool for exactly these situations where you're sitting uh, below a pipe, but uh, for the larger work orders, I really like to go for this tool by now. All right, so that's that. Okay, let's do the middle one. Oh, that was risky. Oh boy, that was risky. I didn't uh, pay attention to the pipes there, and if they were running just a little bit differently, I was just uh, fried myself to death. So. It's really easy to make mistakes, even if you know how everything works, keep that in mind. Um, so don't be ashamed if you're blowing up yourself, that's part of the fun. Alright, so... No, let's get rid of that. Alright, while we're here, I'm going to talk about the power generator. Because the power generator is that uh, oddly green uh, glowing thing in front of us. It's uh, connected to breakers, and to, sa to safely extract it, the breakers must be removed first. And here we have one breaker unit. Um, we're disabling it by dis uh, removing the fuse, and you see there's a red light blinking, and if I touch the fuse while the red light is blinking, I'm going to get zapped and hurt. So there we go. Wait until it's out, and there's the fuse. Um, I touched the fuse once and I died. It uh, blew my, it blew a hole into my helmet, and I instantly died. So uh, therefore, I have that uh, policy of just killing these things by now. I don't know if there's a uh, a more useful way to handle these guys, but uh, well, safety first. It was for me. So I'm going inside and uh, grabbing some O2 bottles. They were uh, hanging here. And also I'm grabbing those repair kits because uh, these are the things you use on, you can repair your tools with. Alright, so now we have removed the fuse, the red lights, I think that was quite uh, self-explanatory. And now uh, we can easily uh, get rid of the... Um, of the power generator once we have severed uh, the hull from uh, from that. Okay, so now I want to uh, remove those nacelles I just uh, noticed there. I must have overlooked them, silly me. A little bit embarrassed of myself that I didn't notice them on the outside of the ship, but whatever. Let's get rid of them first, and then we should be able to uh, reach the generator soon. So you see, uh, getting on the generator is a little bit more work, but, um, well, I have to say right now I'm not uh, really focused here. Uh, I'm explaining a lot and I'm wasting a lot of time with that. I did mistakes on the nacelles, so you can be a lot quicker than me here. All right. So now we have the nacelles out of the business. Um, no, we get, we go outside. Um, the next thing I want to do is uh, get my orientation back and get back to the rear of the ship. So now what I like to do is turn on the structural goggles and check if I missed any um, um, cut points. So on the top side I didn't. Let's go on the bottom side. 
and check if uh, there is everything disconnected as well. Alright, it seems good. Okay. So if I did everything right, um, everything will just uh, fall to pieces now. The thing with the outer hull of the gecko is these plates are all way too heavy to move um, with your grapple. So the last step I do now is uh, dislodging all the fuel pipes from the thrusters. Because these are also uh, connections to the hull. And also, um, we're uh, now getting closer to the point where we can just uh, safely salvage those thrusters as well. Alright, so next step is we're going to open us some access to the generator. Um, to do so, I'm going to use the tethers here. And I'm going to tether uh, this module onto the wall. And if you did everything correctly, it just slides out. And it looks good. It looks like we did everything correct here. And the module is just sliding out, giving us access to the generator unit. So there's uh, this nasty keel. It's super hard uh, in, your, in my way here, so... Ugh. No, I can't tether it. Okay, well, let's do it like this. I thought I could tether it into the processor right away, but it was wrong. Okay, so let's get rid of the parts uh, which are just uh, in my way. So I can't uh, get the generator uh, out of its casing right now, and that's because there's still uh, piping here. So as we see here, uh, the, um, the fuel pipes are already diffused. Um, the cold pipes are not, you see that uh, due to the bl uh, lights there. So this means if I shoot the uh, coolant pipe, it will explode. But at this point, as long as the, uh, as long as the um, fuel pipe is already diffused, it's not really an issue. So we're going now here, because these things are connecting the generator with the box. So for the coolant pipe get away a little bit. You can diffuse the coolant pipe of course beforehand but uh... Oh, I was lucky this time. Sometimes it explodes in my face. I still haven't figured out why. I don't know. So now we are uh, ready. The box is now loose and uh, we can now pull that box out. So. It's 1,000 kilo, so it's uh, a quite heavy thing. So handle it with care. There's a generator unit inside. All right. Your oxygen reserves are low. Don't so carbon dioxide can cause damage to Link's equipment. Let's uh, tether that bad boy to a Jax. And I'm going to grab myself some oxygen in the meantime. Slow down, slow down, okay. You can uh, propel yourself with this uh, method to insane speeds. If you don't know how, you just have to tether yourself and uh, hold the right mouse button. And then you can propel yourself to insane speeds if you're uh, lighter than the object you're tethered to. So. If the object is lighter than you, you pull it towards you. So now we have the box here. Um, I pulled it uh, towards the uh, jacks here because it makes everything a lot easier to manage. Because we have to, uh, I like to have a clear shot between the barge and the generator. So um, this generator unit here is inside the box. So this shiny little thing here is the generator, my dear friends. So I'm removing a few plates and now I'm grabbing hold of it. And now we're removing the reactor. And I I wanted to tie, uh, tie it to the jacks first because it's so much easier to uh, get a clear angle on the generator because this thing is heavy, big and bulky and you don't want it to explode. At no cost you want it to explode. So 
that's why I wanted to do it like that. And from here on, the concept gets uh, is clearly visible, I think. So um, the unit I cut loose here, um, well, we're, the shift is going to end in a second, so um, we're going to get tossed out of here. <laughs> so as you see, um, I removed this part of the panel, and uh, now I have access to the uh, thruster unit as well. I'm going to uh, shove it down to the barge. Hopefully we can manage before the game ends, but uh, well... I don't think that was enough. But whatever might be the case, so this was our uh, reactor. As you see, the reactor in itself is worth 3 million. And of course, it's doable in a lot less time than I did here, because there was a lot of explaining going on. But uh, whatever might be the case, let's check, quick check my equipment, everything is nice. And let's get right back into the next ship, uh, shift, because I wasn't quite done yet. We're, we're almost done, but not quite yet. So, well, maybe not the best time to sip a coffee, but whatever. Um, so let's get back to that. So we processed one of the thrusters. Um, from here on, you see um, the structural components of the gecko are all quite uh, working similarly. And uh, judging from what I see here, um, a lot of these parts are already loosened. Um, there was just one thing I wanted to emphasize uh, before I left this tutorial, and that's uh, how much jaxes are your friends. Because as you see here, if you want to uh, connect this uh, piece of hull directly to the processor, um, you can try, but uh, well, let's see. I just want to... Uh, showcase at once um, what can happen or what will happen. So first off, I think we're going to smash a, a fuel unit and they're getting, two units are getting entangled with each other. Well, it's it's not that uh, horrible, but um, a lot easier for me are things if I uh, start tethering big units like these um, completely to the Jaxus. And that's a reason why I really like to uh, have the um, tether lifetime upgrades uh, before I go for gecko processing uh, salvaging because um, it's so helpful if you're uh, having the ability to have those long-lasting tethers because as you see here the other part which I try to toss directly into the processor is just uh, well making bogus here. It's, uh, it's just hanging around. The tethers have dissolved due to the lack of line of sight and uh, nothing worked out. While this here is slowly drifting towards its destination point. And even more so, um, it's drifting in a way that I'm getting um, access to, uh, like here, the fuel tank. Um, right now, I don't have them on my uh, work order table, so they're not as important to me. But later on, they will appear on the work order table, so that's an easy and cheap way to do that. And here goes the same thing. If I uh, just uh, tether that bad boy um, to this Jax here and then send them off over to the processor, uh, things get a lot easier. So... Um, Long story short, use your Jaxes. They're uh, they're here to help you, especially with those larger portions of those ships, because you can't cut them. Uh, you can't cut them uh, smaller. Like they are just that big. And uh, once they're uh, like tethered to the Jacks, and you have salvaged everything, um, connecting them to the processing unit is a lot easier. Like this. I'm showcasing this uh, so heavily um, in this video because I really feel like that's, that this is... Ooh, that was a bad tether. Um, that this is one of the largest uh, differences between uh, the salvage of a Mackerel and a Gecko. You have to handle much larger ship portions and uh, that sure is a gameplay difference. As you see here, I completely uh, botched it up due to the uh, try 
to not tether it to the jacks while our uh, other uh, example here is uh, flying gently and safely towards the direction where we want it while this rascal here uh, will only give us trouble. So I think that sums it up pretty decently. So for the rest of the ship, it's a recurring procedure. You have to uh, dislodge the bigger uh, portion, the bigger plates of the ship, and then you can reach uh, the um, rest of it. So one thing I really wanted to show though is a very uh, neat and useful uh, trick to reach the ECU unit easily. Um, let's turn on the systems goggles. So, or is it an objects goggle? So, where, where, where are you at? There's the computer terminal. There are the seats. Wasn't the ECU somewhere like here? Am I dumb now? Well, well, even if I'm dumb, um, what I want to showcase here is uh, also easily shown like this. The inner casing of the gecko is made out of easily dissolvable aluminum plates. While you might as well cut them and uh, salvage them, you can also open yourself an easy way uh, to get uh, things... What's that? to get an easy uh, opening uh, into the inner room of the gecko. Ah, that's these uh, weird panels. Um, by just lasering away the uh, aluminum plates. Once we're uh, getting rid of more and more outer plates, um, this gets more and more effective. And you can also cut out the ECU by just uh, opening up the room where it's located and dislodging it once you have the uh, outer plate removed. Same goes for the power generator. Um, it's pretty easily um, done once you're uh, getting the hang of it. So every outer uh, unit of the hull can be safely dislodged and I really like uh, the way of going with your structural goggles looking for where where did I miss spots and if you didn't miss a spot like uh, this here Let's uh, drift around. I want to show you the process one more time. I'm drifting around, checking if there are any connectors left. No. So it's safe to assume that this part uh, of the ship is now loose. Let's uh, put our theory to the test. So we're always uh, look for your closest jacks. Or uh, if you're not close to a jax, you can always uh, use the outer structural walls as well. But you see, we did it. Uh, we did everything right. Uh, the outer plates are uh, floating away. So here we go. And uh, let's do a quick one here. And one thing I really uh, also noticed is. The more debris is floating around in space, uh, the more my computer is struggling. So uh, if you are having a, a weak hardware like me, um, you can also uh, easy it up. So you see here, cutting those plates is not as effective. So that's why I like to melt them away. Anyways, I feel like that pretty much covers it up. I left a whole bi uh, a big old mess, but you can do that better. Um, the same procedure I uh, opened up the reactor with, you can uh, of course repeat with a generator and uh, everything. You can strip off the whole entire outer hull uh, piece by piece with uh, by doing so. But, uh, there we go. So overall, we're now having a big pile of mess here, and uh, I would strongly emphasize to uh, or, or recommend to do it in an orderly way, because uh, the more um, mess you produce, the more large sluggish pieces of junk, space junk you have to uh, manage, and that is certainly a problem. So I started to, uh, well, it's more a problem of my uh, CPU, but uh, I started to um, 
avoid cutting too many pieces loose at once. But uh, even if my system could handle it better, um, I would still uh, try to avoid it because every loose piece of uh, hull you have to manage somewhere and somehow. And uh, the more uh, loose pieces you have to manage, the more... Uh, oh, oh, look. Give me my tether back. Uh, the more loose pieces you have that need to be managed, um, the harder it gets in the bottom line. So, there we go. Um, that's why I really like to uh, try to do as to to do it as efficiently as possible and have as little floating debris as possible. Anyways, so with this method, you will be able to this uh, to dislodge this uh, beast safely and uh, securely because now we, it's just a, a matter of tedium left because uh, we just have to uh, reach all the uh, parts we want to have and uh, pull them into the uh, right, Cutter, and pull them into the processors because there's not much more than uh, than that to do um, just wanted to try to show that one more time before I drop out there we go. So, with this you're reaching the inner room really, really easily. And there you can process all the seats. The larger plates like these are a lot harder to melt down. And uh, my tool can't uh, manage them. I can only uh, manage the smaller plates. And um, these I'll usually cut. All right, so overall, I don't want to spoil the rest of the fun for you because uh, apart from that, so go into the systems goggle one more time. Um, apart from that, you just need to take it piece by piece. I feel like the generator uh, was the is the biggest difficulty and the general understanding of how the hull uh, of the ship works were the biggest parts for me to crack. Once I understood that, the rest uh, came pretty easily and that's pretty pretty uh, nice to understand. Okay, so feel free to drop me some comments down below if you have anything on your mind, if you feel like there's anything I left out or some things you want to add. I don't mind, I actually appreciate the more knowledge we accumulate here, the more uh, value this video gets. So. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.